people to see your distress. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, you look like it. Happy. You look like you're being held at gunpoint. Sometimes you feel that way. Do I have, all right, we are good. I don't have the title, but I do have episode 16. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Designated Players Podcast, season three, episode 16. It's MLS week four recap, and this is going to be fun because I got a total of 22 minutes of MLS action into my eyeballs this weekend. So rock on. Professional podcast. Did you uh, did you get to catch many games? Mm, if you've got 22 minutes, I probably got like 23. Come on. This is going to be a great episode. <laughs> stock up, stock down, star of the week, flop of the week, team of the week, worst team of the week. Hype Trainer Dumpster Fire. And of course, our board is filling up with all the memes. We got the NYC banner. We got FCC to the moon. And we're ending Euro snobism on this podcast, people. It's happening. This would be great. We can have we can have all our memes on there by the end of the season. That's the goal, right? I figured that'd be a really cool goal to have. So like let's it. make it happen. Good idea. Good idea. Let's make it happen. Um I can see you're still rocking the scarf from uh Yes, from, from, from last day. episode. Yes. Like, for those like of you for those of you that don't know, haven't seen Monday's episode, first of all, go look, go check it out. Yeah. Go right now. Do it. Click off of this. It. this we will we will freeze right now so that you can come back to it. Yep. Okay, I'm done freezing. Okay. Welcome back. So welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the episode. FCC scarf is back again because I have made the pledge to wear FCC. Until they lose a game. And right, yeah, is that going to happen when they, if like, they go on a five-game win streak, lose, then go on a seven-game win streak? Does it stay for the seven-game win streak? No. Oh, in, unless, unless they lose so poorly that I pick them as my worst team of the week again. <laughs> Awful. Um, mine ties in, as always, to um, a player or a team involved in this week's episode, and I'll give Oops, a little spoiler. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, we're going to Real Salt Lake, who are oh. absolutely flying in the Western Conferences. We are four weeks in, and they sit undefeated at the top of the table. Scary. How wild is that? You call it wild, I call it scary. I want to start negative today, because we just haven't had enough toxicity in the, pre, the pre-recording, you know? <laughs> um, Let's start with stock down. Okay. You want me to go I'll first? I'll let you go first. I'll let you go first. All right. I'll give, you, I'll give you one and then you could jump in with one. We'll go one on one. I'm cool with that. All right. Cool. So my first stock down is Tati Castellanos. Ooh, wow. Yeah. So I, I know NYC is battling with or balancing CCL with league play. And that's tough. Clearly, if you've seen the numbers on Twitter, CCL teams in the league have been struggling the entire season so far. However, Tati Castellanos, your reigning golden boot winner, the guy who scored the most goals last season so far has zero goals, zero assists. I don't think Tati has been playing particularly awful. I don't think he's a bad player, obviously, but your stock is going down when you're the golden boot winner and you are now four games since the season where he's been playing. It's not like he's been, you know, not playing in in the start of the season to like stay rested for CCL. He's been playing these games and he hasn't scored. He hasn't really been as involved in the attack. I get NYC has been struggling as well, but yeah, I mean, his stock's going to go down when you go from golden boot to no goals in the first four. That's funny because I also took a player from NYC. Oh, yeah. But it's a defender. His name is Andres Yasin, and I'm tired of watching him play it right back. Is, is he a defender? He's not. <laughs> but the, the Andres Yasin right wing back experiment is done. Like, put a stamp on it. It, it. Put it, take it, wrap it in a bow, tie it up nice and pretty, put it on the shelf next to the Jackson Ewell center back experiment. Both of them shelved, never again. <laughs> Can Andres Yasin do it on a random Tuesday against Comunicaciones? Sure. When he comes into MLS, where he has actual people to play against, he is just a liability. 
both he's he was responsible for both goals on uh, on Saturday. Where the first one he let Bedoya absolutely just walk free on a free kick. They he came he did a little come around the wall. He put a body on him, and they just stood there. Header comes back across. Bedoya taps in. If you're letting Andres Bedoya beat you to a ball, Andres Bedoya, Alejandro Bedoya beat you to. I don't even know his name. <laughs> Leaving Ale Bedoya beat you to a ball on the back post in a game at home where your field is like the size of your banner, that's bad. Then later on in that half, Gazdag got straight in front of him on a cross for the second goal. Um, I know you're down bad right back in Greece. I get it. But there has to be some better option. I don't know if it's Chris Gloucester. I don't know if it's Maxime should know it right back. I don't know. I don't know. But it, there's got to be a better option than him. Yeah, that's fair. I know. I, I agree, though. I think that they are pretty strapped on uh, – or, or they're they're lacking right backs right now at the moment. They they really could use some Antons in their home coming back. Yeah, and who knows what type of player he's going to be when he gets back. That's a bad injury he, he's coming back from, so we'll see. Yep. All right. I'll give you my second one here. So I went with Jake Nerwinski here. So <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Go ahead. So Jake Nerwinski's had a pretty rough start to the season, to say the least. He's currently the lowest rated player on who scored for Vancouver on the entire team. And that is because he has made two appearances this season. Game one, he got red carded. Uh, granted, a little bit harshly, I would say, in uh, getting the double yellow there. However, he comes back now, plays against LAFC, never going to be an easy matchup, especially away at LAFC. I get that. But I got a couple, I got a few of his stats here from Sofa Score. So he made. Why have you gone away from who scored? Sorry, we need to really talk about this. Why have you gone away from the GOAT? Because Sofa Score has more of the detailed statistics. Oh, the ones that nobody cares about except for when they match your opinion. Okay. Yes, of course. Um, and my and it matched my opinion this time. So Jake Nowinski against LAFC had two clearances, three interceptions. However, he was dribbled past four times. He lost possession five times. He won one out of six ground duels, uh, one zero and one zero aerial duels, all while Vancouver gave up three goals and lost the game again. Then they currently sit bottom of the Western table, even below San Jose. So it's been a really rough year for him. And I valued his stock higher at the beginning of the season. He was always a solid defender. I still think he's a solid defender, but he's had a really rough start to the year. So I think his stock takes a hit. Interesting. Big ups Thomas Hassall. I don't know if you watched that game, but he I, I know he conceded three, but he is the reason it wasn't seven. He's gonna have a rough year this year because his defense in front is not no, he's good. gonna have a great he's gonna have a great statistical year. His win loss is gonna look like Jacob deGrom on a normal Met season, but his his stats are gonna be Jacob deGrom on a normal Met season. Um uh, I'm real happy about this pick. Um any chance I have to make people realize this guy is not that good, I'm going to do it. You can guess. Jackson you know. Ewell. Try again. Uh, Jordan Lewis. No, I, mean, I love Jordan Lewis. Same team, though. Oh, yeah, William Yarbrough. William Yarbrough. <laughs> can we talk about that 89th minute kaboom that he had? He really, all game, he had nothing to do, by the way. Nothing. Like, every shot went over the bar. He had one kind of collection. And then all of a sudden, in the 89th minute, he decides to take a goal kick right down the middle, line drive straight into the center mid of, of Houston, who plays it into Tyler Pasher. And instead of, like, taking an angle and trying to make himself big, he just runs straight by him and gets beat. I get that, you, I get that you're trying to make up for it, but at that time, in that spot, with three points on the line, you can't make that mistake. Stock down. Yeah, that was that was pretty bad. That was almost as bad as Brad Guzan on that first goal. Oh man, Brad's bad. Um, 
We're going to keep, we're going to go negative first, then positive today. I want to know who your worst team of the week was. So my worst team of the week, this one might be a little bit surprising here, but I went with New England here. Ooh, so, I think that's harsh, but go on. So New England's coming off back-to-back games where they've blown two goal leads. This is including CCL for those that are unsure. Blew a two goal lead against RSL. Blew a three goal lead against Pumas. And now this week they come up against Charlotte, who has been completely winless, completely tieless. They have lost every game so far this season. They needed a win so badly. And they got a great opponent to get a win, a team that has been struggling a lot this, so far this season. And you lost three to one. I know that there are a few injury issues going on with New England at the moment, but they're in a pretty bad spell of form at the moment. And I think that that was exemplified when they go to a winless Charlotte and lose. I get going away to Charlotte, expansion team with a lot of hype surrounding it at home. Probably wasn't going to be the easiest, but it's the team still was winless the entire year. I mean, I think you got to at least get a result somehow. I mean, you're the supporter, you're the reigning supporter shield points record champions. You can't just go to the expansion team that's been winless all year and then lose. I mean, you can because it's MLS and anything can happen. Mm-hmm. But I, I think they're hitting a bad spell form right now. And Bruce really needs to figure something out here because I think the momentum for this team is, is going down at the moment. Yep. Um, we were talking about this, so I just wanted to throw this little tidbit in there about uh, New England going to Charlotte. We talked about how it was going to be 38,000 for a sellout, right? Can you guess how many they actually had? Uh, it, I saw there were a lot of empty seats from what I, what I heard in terms of like, I think buying tickets, I'd probably guess maybe like 30, 30 K. 29. I think it was 29-1. So that is about 78, 29-3, that's 78%, 77, closer to 77.5% sellout after their first game of 75K. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, go check out uh, our either our clip or our episode, probably our episode, you'll probably get a, more, a better kick out of it. But we did a whole Charlotte FC episode talking about their uh, their ticket prices and stuff and I want to go check that out. That's a good one. Mine, also not as obvious. I stayed away from Inter Miami. We know they suck. We know that they're consistently the worst team in the field. One goal in nine games, or one go- one goal, nine goals against in four games, or whatever it is. They look like garbage. But I went with a very bad Sporting Kansas City team. Tim Melia looks like the the MLS pool goalkeeper he was back in 2012. Fontas is nothing like he was last year. They desperately miss missing Polito up top. Russell and Shallowy don't exist. Busio really hasn't been replaced. Losing Ily Sanchez, massive. There's not a single player on this team that you look and you're like, yeah, this guy, we might be able to build around him one day. Maybe um, Hernandez, but the rest are just getting old. Zussi, Emilia, or they're just not that good. You know, Ismiat Marine and and Ben Sweat even uh, has been struggling. Um, I'm going to go out here and say, I don't think them getting a brand new striker is going to fix whatever's going on right now. There's a lot more to go on. They need a really good number eight because um, Roger Espinosa just can't do it on his own. And they need somebody to pull the strings along with the striker. So there are lots of holes to fill on this team. Yeah, they are just. They, they, we'll, we'll, we're going to talk more about them later. A little bit of a spoiler there. Spoiler. But- um, yeah, that is, they have been off to a, a pretty tough start this season. They are, if I remember correctly, hold freeze. Are they bottom of the West right now? They are third bottom right now, I think. Third bottom of the West. This is a team that people were predicting to win the West. Yeah, I think both of us probably had high expectations for them. Yeah, well. I mean, I don't, I didn't have them winning, but I had them up like fourth or fifth, I think. But they are at least in the playoffs for sure. Yeah, three goals for eight goals against. Only one win in four games. That's just not great. And they're they're the only pe- – granted, Nashville are also down there, by the way, side note. And Seattle and Portland. So, basically, they yeah. just did this. Flip. 
and flipped our predictions on its head. So outside of LAFC, of course. Yep. LAFC to the moon. And right. Philly are also up top. Yeah, I've got the one-two right now for the Eastern Conference. Philly, Philly and Columbus. Columbus. Yeah. Um, all right, continue with the negativity, continue with the toxicity. Give me your flop of the week. All right, so I'll keep this one pretty quick on the flop of the week. I, I don't have a ton to say on him, but I went with Sebastian Breza here. Me too. Oh, oh nice. Let's go. The line. <laughs> yeah, so for those that didn't see the game, Atlanta was down 3-1. Down Dom bad. Dwyer gets sent off. They're down to 10 men while Montreal are up 3-1. Why is this the theme this year? It's like teams go down 3 1, down a man, and then all of a sudden storm back and steal a point. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually harder to play against 10 men than it is to play against 11 because you train day and day and day and day to be in the right spot against 11. So when they change it against 10, your, your spacing is off. It's very, very cool. Well, I don't think, I, in this case, I think it was on, on Braza here that they lost the three points because mm-hmm. the, way, the way he played Brooks Lennon's free kick at the end of the game, no oh, shot yeah. should that ball have gone at the net. Never and you can see years. it because there were other players on the Montreal team that got in his face about it after he let it in because yep. that was a howler. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, 35 yards out, clear view of it. He didn't move his feet. He dove late. And it's a 90-second minute of play. You could have gotten three points in one of the hardest stadiums to play away in ever. That and New York City are probably the two toughest places to play away ever. Maybe Seattle. But, the fir- I mean, the first two goals unsavable. A really bad giveaway by Kone. And um, a banger by Almada. That Almada, that Almada one that's going on. Uh, Euro snobs won't tell you about goals like this <laughs> on TikTok. Make sure you follow us on TikTok for that. Um he had a 4.4 rating on who scored.com, which is the lowest tied with Tim Melia, by the way. Um, but yeah, that last goal did it for me. You, you can't put your team in that position. You just can't. Yeah. Sofa score also finished the game for him with zero saves. Yes. Zero saves. Sorry. I have that note somewhere too. You, I, and again, I get that it was two unsavable first shots, but you train day in and day out to make one save a game. Every day, that's what, that's what I'm telling the kids that I train. That's what I was told when I was training. You train to make one save in the 90th minute to save three points. He didn't do it. Yeah. Wow. And Montreal needed these three points big time because they've struggled so far this they season. They really did. So that, that, was, that was a really big blow to Montreal, that last goal. It re- yeah, absolutely. Um, shall we go back a little bit positive, you know, the boring stuff? Yeah. I mean, that was a great transition to positive. We had the same final flop of the week. Yeah. So we got to transition positive. now. We're probably, we, we both agree on player of the week too, I'm sure. So yes. we'll go to player of the week first. Um, Casper Shabilko with the brace against a very, very good sporting Kansas city team, because I know people didn't actually listen to the part that I just talked about. That's a weird way to say Brad Guzanis. <laughs> player of the week keeping Atlanta in the game getting them a point while while a man down I mean Brad goes in every day of the week Jesus Ferreira with a hat trick against a very good Portland side within the first 30 minutes of the game oh and he also had an assist too on the last goal um I mean it's obvious but on a on a more serious note this is an absolutely great time for this man to start putting the ball in the back of the net right before the biggest three games in men's national team the last eight years yep it was uh, an amazing performance for him that is really going to help him have some like hold some weight in terms of the striker conversation for these upcoming three games just like you mentioned Ready? yeah here's the question yeah do you start him next game? Do you start him against Mexico? Something tells me he's still number two behind Pepe. But if Greg were to rotate, I think Greg plays Ferreira over PFOC. 
which I think is awful because PFOC is absolutely on fire. Uh, yeah, I would personally go PFOC. I, as harsh as it is, I'd probably go Ferrer. Well, you know what? I don't even know if Pepe really deserves to be number one right now because he hasn't been doing anything for club. No, he hasn't. But it goes back to our conversation on uh, on Monday about form versus uh, familiarity, right? Yeah. So do we need a John Brooks right now? Or do we need somebody who knows the who knows the game or knows the system? In the same breath, do we need a Jordan Peefock who's on fire but hasn't played in the men's national? He wasn't here last camp. They didn't call him in. So now you're you're expecting to pick up two months worth of improvement in a week. Yeah, I'd personally go Peefock, I think. However, I think Greg goes probably Pepe one. And then I think Greg probably goes Ferreira two. So he just doesn't seem to rate PFOC for some reason. Yeah. Um, Pepe's only got six appearances for Augsburg so far. He didn't play at all in, uh, in the 3-2 loss against Stuttgart. But he did make the bench. So he's been, he's been relegated down a little bit. <laughs> but he'll, he'll get it together eventually. Yeah, so so it's really I, I would I wouldn't be shocked to see Jesus Ferreira starting for our national team against Mexico. Wouldn't be shocked. We shall see. Shall we go to team of the week? Yeah, we could do that. I'll let you go first. All right. Mine's along the same lines. I went with I went with FC Delos here. They scored the most goals, they get team of the week. You're boring. Yep. They uh they did it against a really good. Portland side. I think Portland's a strong team. It's going to be competing in the playoffs. This is your MLS Cup runner-up from last season. And Dallas just dismantled them. I know Dallas was at home. That's always an advantage in this league. But 4-1 win where your striker scores a hat-trick within 30 minutes, they they just dominated them. And, and Dallas looked really good doing so. I, I think Dallas is proving that they are a a contender in the Western Conference this season and, and not a team to sleep on like last season. So great Something performance for really them. Pay attention to. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. But no, you're good. You're good. They didn't start Blanco. They're down to their third and fourth center backs with Zuparic and, and Maviala making their way back from injury. And uh, so I just, I would be careful with, I, I like, I, when I talk about Ferreira, I said a pretty good team, right? You still got Chara, Chara, Niasgoda, Espria, right? Like they're they're pretty pretty good going forward. But in the back, they weren't as strong as as they usually are. So easy with that. Um, yeah, they still got at least three fifths of their starting back line is probably it was in that game. How are you going to sit here and let? Charlotte FC win their first game in history against a very good New England Red side. By the way, if we're call, if we're calling that Portland side very good, this New England Red side with Josie Altidore up top. <laughs> deep. Don't forget um, Sebastian Lechet. Don't don't you disrespect him. Um, first win in club history. They looked really good. We kept talking about how the team itself played very well. Just was missing that last little bit. Well, Swiderski was that last little bit. Two goals. Um, to get himself off the mark. Ben Bender pulling the strings. Um, not a super strong New England side, but got to give it to the new guys, right? Um, my team of the week, Charlotte FC, for finally putting all the pieces together and getting their first win. Congratulations. Big up, Charlotte. Big up, Charlotte. I cheated on stock up and put three people in there. Oh, my. Unbelievable. Yep. So I'm going to go first, and we'll, we'll flip-flop. Right. I told you that we were going to be talking about somebody from Real Salt Lake. Yeah. And that somebody is Zach McMath in goal against a, a very good attack in Nashville, seven saves to keep, to bring an undefeated Real Salt Lake side into a tie for the top of the West. When we pretty much predicted in the rock bottom, <laughs> Do I need to say more? The only reason he wasn't my player of the week outside of Ferreira having a hat trick was that half of his saves were pretty routine. But 
the other half. So I think four of his seven saves were either one-on-ones or really full extension dives. Stock up, Zach McMath. Well done, buddy. Uh, you could put him on stock up, but he was never going to be close to player of the week. Um, he is a goalkeeper. He, auto- he automatically gets massive props. Whatever you say. Whatever makes you happy. Um, all right, so my, my first one here on stock up, I'll go with this one since we just talked about it. I put Swiderski here. I imagine you probably have Swiderski on yours as well, or or Bender, yeah, yeah. one of the two. But um, Swiderski bags two goals for Charlotte in their first win, and that's huge. They really needed that, just as you had mentioned before, that like last piece to click, and Swiderski's finishing that last game was, I think, that last piece that needed to click for them. Because all season long, even though they haven't had any wins, they've been playing pretty decent. You know, they haven't looked awful. They haven't put any, like, FCC versus Austin or Inter-Miami versus Austin type performances out there. They've been competitive. They're, they're, you know, they're playing well. I think they were missing the finishing. And Swiderski provided that this game. And, and it showed because they were able to come away with their first win and their first three points of the season. I also took somebody from Charlotte, but I took Ben Bender, my mm-hmm. boy Ben. First of all, with a name like Ben Bender, you, you automatically are raising your stock. Ben Leg Bender. Big facts. Um, Bender has been the best player on Charlotte for three weeks straight. Like, if you watch the game, he has been the best player for three weeks straight. It's not even a competition. Um, and this week, it finally led to three points. Put a goal, got an assist. 37 touches and three key passes to control the Charlotte attack. Again, not the best New England Rebs teams they could have gone up against, but playing at home in front of all those people. Straight out of college. This man was number one pick straight out of college. And he's, he's proving that he can perform at this level. Um, big props to the kid. Well done raising that stock. Good work. This is because we had our Charlotte episode. Now all of a sudden they had to have been. We talk about them, they get better. We motivate. Let's talk about Red Bull. Let's not. It's my turn. So my other player whose stock went up this week is an homage to our former co-host here, and I'm sure you can pick up where I'm going with this one. Ryan Hollingshead is my (laughs) other stock up player for this week. He grabbed, if, if you missed the game last night, I'm sure plenty of people on the East Coast did. It was a really late one. 10 p.m. games on Sunday need to go away. So unnecessary to do that. The game before it was at 4 p.m. You tell me you can't find the time to squeeze it in a little bit earlier. Um, anyway, Ryan Hollingshead got two goals last night in an LAFC 3-1 win over Vancouver. Hollingshead, for those that don't remember, didn't even start the season as a starting left back. He worked his way into the starting role. And with performances like this, he's going to keep it for the time going forward. And we knew Hollingshead was great going forward. That's like what he's known for. That and playing in a million different positions. He is, he's Ben Olsen's dream player. He's got, Ben Olsen has pictures of Ryan Hollingshead on his wall while he sleeps. It was a great performance from him going forward. Um, I think he's going to be a great piece for this LAFC back line. And uh, definitely, I think, an upgrade over Farfan. And uh, I think he will be good enough to hold Palacios to the, to the bench. Um, so I think his stock definitely went up this week because I think he's furthering his spot, uh, further, further locking down his spot as the starting left back for this team. He scored two goals, but he wasn't even the best player to score two goals. Well, there were a lot of players that scored two goals this week. Yeah, and the best one is going to win Golden Boot. Casper Shabilko, everybody. Yeah, a brace against a in a red hot Sporting Kansas City team um, to keep the fire undefeated. Also, have not lost a game yet. Why? Because they're going to the playoffs. Is that is that the next one over here? Can I fit fire to the playoffs or like playoffs with fire around it? Yeah, I like that. Um, He's on his way to that golden boot. We love to see it. Um, Both goals came from really good movement off the ball. Strong one-time finishes. That's his game. If Chicago learns to play this way consistently and feed him the ball, 
in this style, he's going to be massive in 2022. And I mean, like golden boot massive. Um, Casper Shabilka, raise that stock, baby. Easy to raise it when it's on the basement floor. Yeah, that's exactly where Ryan Hollings head was. You're right. <laughs> Um, hey, do we have anything left other than uh nope we've got a dumpster got fire hype train fire hype train all right well i'll let you go first on this one because i got a i got a two for here well you start and then i'll go in the middle then you finish off all right fine. yeah like i did three two three first one should be pretty easy for you nashville sc missed the playoffs no Dumpster fire, no. They'll turn it around. Gary Smith knows what he's doing. It's got Alex Mawil, Sean Davis, and Dax McCarty. That team doesn't miss the playoffs. Yeah, I agreed. I said dumpster fire on this one as well. Exactly the same thing. They're, they're just in a rough patch right now. This team has too much talent to miss out. They're in a great system. Just, they have a good coach. Give it there's time. There's so much Let's season left. There's so much season left. All they yeah. need is one good run in their end. Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll get it together. One that I know you'll agree with. New York City missed the playoffs. Dumpster fire. They'll turn Hype it around. Hype no, Hype. no. All right, all right. Let me let me give you my reason why. Okay. Toronto FC win the treble. Miss the playoffs next year because they're so focused on all these other things. NYC win MLS Cup, get into their first Champions League, make it relatively deep against, albeit poor opponents, but make it deep, and they start off real slow. I'm seeing TFC 2018 vibes, or 2019, whichever, whichever. I thought it was 2017 treble, 2018 flop. But I might be wrong on my years there, but you know what I mean. I can see this being yes, there. 2018. They they finished ninth in the East. Yep. I told you. Um, I can absolutely see that being a New York City thing. And um, yeah, that, that's all I have to say is is New York City straight to the floor. They can use their uh, they can use their little banner to cover themselves in warmth. All like half of them. They're gonna make the playoffs. They, they're Tell they're bad right now. They have to balance CCL and the league. Which, if you look at the numbers, every CCL team has been struggling with that. The East Seattle, New England, Montreal, they all struggled with balancing both the league and CCL. And and NY, NYC, to be honest, they're not super deep. They haven't really been rotating. Their guys have been playing a ton of games. So I think once CCL is done, which is Coming up soon, one way or another, whether they win it or they get knocked out, they will be able. Their guys will be able to have more rest in between games because they won't have to play midweek games anymore. Well, that's not true with MLS's schedule. You probably will, um, but it, it should be less. It'll be less than what they have to do deal with now. Uh, three of their first four games, they have dropped points because they haven't scored goals. I think this team has a lot of attacking talent. They will figure out how to score goals. They have Tyus Magno, they have Tati Castellanos, Maxi Morales. They will figure out how to score goals. So I think defensively, they will stay strong. They, they are always super consistently strong defensively. And the goals will come. I think as soon as CCL is done, things will start to click again. And, and the team will start scoring goals and start getting points. So I, I think they'll make the playoffs. I know I want you want to, them to not. But I want to build off exactly what you just said about not being deep enough. Maxime Cheneau out injured. So you're down to two center backs and Luke Latinovich until he gets back. You've got four left backs, only one of which probably can do a job right now, which is Matt Malte Amundsen. Chris Gloucester still hasn't shown anything. He got in the game a little bit last week, but. Uh, hasn't gotten a chance to start. Right backs, you got two right backs, both of which are hurt. Keaton Parks and Nicholas Acevedo. Alfred, Alfredo Morales. Santi Rodriguez, Maxi Morales. 
or your five center mids and, and Zale on that you can probably rotate through. Tyus Magno, Tiago Andrade, Gabriel Pereira, who made like four appearances for Corinthians. So I'm not, I, I don't know anything about him. And then Tati Castellanos and a bear, one of which, or one of which probably is going to be sold very soon. Any one of those guys picks up a long-term injury, as we've seen it right back already, you're in trouble. This team is not deep enough to make a deep run. What I can see is them getting themselves back into the playoff run for a little bit. And then come that July, August, September, really tough stretch before the, the end of the season, they start to tank because they're just, they have nobody left to play. I think they'll be all right. They were, they were pretty thin. I feel like last season too, and they, they got the job done. So yeah, because nobody got hurt. They got lucky. We'll see what happens. All right. You're up. All right. Last one. SKC missed the playoffs. Yeah. Hype train. Hype train. I don't, I don't think this team, this team is either going to do one of two things. They're going to miss the playoffs or they're going to fire Peter Vermees and make a late run and get like spot seven. But just watching this team play, they just look like a shell of themselves. That back line is not what it used to be. The midfield is confusing as heck and they don't have a true striker. Kyrie Shelton's okay, but Alan Polito is better. I'm hype train. I am hype train as well. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it would be a bit more of it, it may be a hot take for people that are listening, honestly. So I thought it'd be more of a hot take in this one as well. But yeah, I feel like this team misses out of the playoffs. If if NYC is giving 2018 Toronto vibes, SKC is giving 2019 SKC vibes, where they go from being like yeah. top in the West to the next season, they're like bottom of the West. I like that. That's a really good comparison. Yeah. So I mean, we know for me is a good coach. He has had a lot of success with this team, but he has shown that he can also have bad stretches as in 2019 when they were almost rock bottom of the West. They were very poor. And so far with this roster build and the way that they started the season, I could absolutely see this team missing the playoffs because they rode the high tails of Shallowy and Johnny Russell last season, scoring and playing out of their minds. And so far this season, the two of them combined have one goal. And zero assists. Yep. Yeah. And, and it shows knew they're going to flatten out. You knew yeah. it. No Polito this year as well. I mean, their attack is just flat. They have three goals all season so far. And they've conceded eight. They've conceded two goals a game and they can't even score one goal a game. If obviously, if you keep up that consistent rate the rest of the season, they're not making the playoffs. They won't even be close. They'll be competing with Vancouver and San Jose for the wooden spoon of the West. So yeah, I think absolutely hype train as as of this moment, unless unless they can make changes by July, I think this team is missing the playoffs. You know who isn't gonna miss the playoffs? Atlanta United. FCC, baby. You know who they're above right now? Former supporter shield winners, former treble winners, Canadian champions, David Beckham. These guys are going straight to the moon and on that note we will end this episode i just need to make sure we got a good shout in for my boys um thanks everybody for listening we hope you enjoyed um make sure you're following us everywhere you get your podcast so you know when we go live when we start putting things um out there make sure you follow us on all forms of social media so you can check out our clips if you can't check out the whole episode um facebook twitter instagram youtube tiktok make sure you search the designated players podcast so you can find us Uh, and follow us and share and make sure other people follow us because we have great takes except for Connor. So I have great takes. Um, (laughs) Got anything else you want to add? Nope. Great. Well, next week we'll be talking about more headlines, more season reviews, might even get an interview or two in here soon. We're lining those up. So make sure you're following us for all of those. We will see you next time on the next episode of the designated players podcast. See ya.